Hello everyone, hello. This year is dedicated to Ili Nishmas, Rachelei Abbas, Reb Chaim Tzvi. We're learning the Sefer Abbas Chesed. We're learning the Chafetz Chaim's first chilek of the Sefer and the thrust of the first chilek are the halachos that relate to Chesed, the halachos that relate to giving staka. And the Chafetz Chaim expands from that, giving staka, giving a loan, hiring workers and paying workers on time, things like that. And we're into the 10th parak, parak Asiri. And Bezid Hashem, this will be the, uh, the last class of this, uh, of this uh, section of the Sefer Abbas Chesed. Okay. So we're up to Seif Ches in Parak Yud. And uh, the Chavetz Chaim writes as follows. Im sachar shnei poalim so you hire two workers and you have to pay them both. You're supposed to pay them both on time. We've been discussing the laws of paying somebody on time. And right now, you only have money for one of them. You're short right now. You can't pay both of your workers. You have to pay the poor person first. Etc. That when the Torah describes the idea of paying a person on time, a worker on time, mentions the word ani, so it's a remez that you're supposed to pay the uh, the ani first. Oh, which we would have thought something similar. You pay the ani first. Now, seif test the Chavetz Chaim continues. Vim shneim anim oev yonim. But let's say both the workers, they're either both poor or they're both wealthy. Let's say they're both poor. Okay, they're on the same level as far as that goes. And one of them is your relative. And we saw earlier, we saw earlier that for many halachos, a karov takes precedence when it comes to giving staka, for example. So a karov takes precedence. Here the Chavetz Chaim says, that if one of them is your relative, he does not take precedent, precedence. Why not? So the Chavetz Chaim explains, There's a low dummy litzdaka, the kaimel on kar of kodem. Why? Dehocha? Rav mamon shelohu. It's not really your money. The idea is, when I hire workers and they've worked for me, I now have a financial obligation a shibut, I'm a shibut to pay. And that shibut is equal to both of the workers. When I'm giving staka, I have money in my pocket. It's my money. I'm in control. And I'm deciding where it should go. So there we have rules that it, you're supposed to give the money to, it, the staka to a karo first. And then, to, as we discussed back then, that you give two-thirds or three-quarters to the karo. And then from what's left over, you move on to the next, to the next level. But here, both workers have the have an equal claim to the money for that work. And right now, I have two obligations to pay. Oh. And nixe balabayas mishubadim litashlum scharo shalapolo. And therefore, the karov doesn't take precedence. They quote here in the footnotes that so what are you, so what are you supposed to do? So the post can say you'd split it. Right now, you pay each of the workers half of what he deserves, and then when you get the more money later, you'll fill in the rest later. The Achronim point out that this is similar to something we saw a few classes ago, back in Perik Vav, Halacha Yud Gimel, where the Chavetz Chaim is talking about, you know, lending money and giving a loan. So, your Korov comes first. But what if I gave my money to a Gemach, to a lending fund? So once the money's in the gemach, then the person running the, running the gemach, he has no obligation to direct that money to my relatives. Oh, they're my relatives. It's my money. No. Once the money's in the hands of the gemach, it's the gemach's money, and they have their, they have their, own, um, they have their own criterion criteria how they decide to, to distribute it. Or, and certainly the, the Gabbai Tzedakah doesn't have to give to his Krovim. He's not supposed to give to, he's supposed to, give it to what, whatever the criteria are. The Chavetz Chaim writes, 
Ein lekrobe hanosein shulam yisron al hachevin. For kol shekain to krobe zagabai ein lam yisron. Daish hazeh this person kevan shenitan biyado hamalos b'shul hamitzvah who got by here she's okay b'shul kol ir b'shava. Everyone has the same has the same claim to the money. Once the money is out of my hands, then it's distributed equally to whoever you know whoever needs it. But it's not dafka to my karov. So too here. They both work for me. I now owe them both the money. So it's like the money is already partially under their control. So the fact that one's my relative doesn't matter. Very interesting halacha. And therefore, what would you do? You would uh, split it. You, you, you would uh, split what you have between the two, uh, be- between the two workers. Okay.